Hey, it's Bex here, and this is Fun Kids Meets, the podcast where we meet amazing people. This week, you can hear my chat with Shana Jackson about the Nine Night Mystery. It's a page-turning, fast-paced, twisty murder mystery where a surprise birthday party goes horribly wrong. So I started off by asking her about the main character, Wesley, who, when we meet him, is right in the thick of it. That's right. So we meet Wesley and Wesley is an 11 year old young lad. And the night before he had arranged a surprise party for his neighbour, along with his two friends, as a favour for his mum, really. She asks him to pop round the next morning to give her a hand with a project. And da da da, he finds her dead in her bed. And he is as I would be, absolutely freaking out. And he thinks that one of the five people invited to her surprise party last night is the culprit. So they go on the journey to find her. And it's called the Nine Night Mystery because in Caribbean culture and traditions, a nine night is a time where you come together to celebrate the life of a person that you have lost and you celebrate them every night for nine nights after they've passed away. It is believed that it takes the spirit nine days and nights to do all their earthly business before they pass on to heaven. So yes, there's a lot going on. And yes, Wesley is is the only way I can put it, really. I mean, you would be, wouldn't you? You would be a, a little bit perturbed, at the very least, and especially when you're going into your mum's friend's house and, you know, all you're expected to do is do some painting and then this happens. And Nine Night is such an interesting thing. I'd never heard of it before, but it's such a good way to frame the book as well. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, so the tradition stems from West Africa and it's all over the Caribbean and different islands have different traditions for it. And it's not a time for mourning, but mourning is what happens at the funeral. This is really a time for celebration. And each night people come round with food and drinks and you can sing and you can talk and you can play dominoes or any games that you like and really just find comfort in your friends and family. So it's a really nice thing. And I first experienced a nine night properly back in 2010. My mum passed away. And um, yeah, so lots of people came to our family home every night. And I was quite shocked. I was like, let's all be quiet, shall we? <laughs> and, and then it was like, gosh, you're, you're, you're very English. And uh, I really got uh, lots of comfort and a really nice feeling from that time. It was very sad, but yeah, very, very loving as well. Wes and his mum are there to kind of help everyone through as well. And you've got uh, you've got Margot, you've got Josie, you've got best friends. It must be quite nice to write about these friends as well, kind of like obviously working together to solve this case, but also exploring their friendship as well. Absolutely. So, yeah, so Wesley, uh, his two friends and neighbours, Margot and Josie, he's known Josie for a long time. They grew up on their close together and Margot is a newer friend and he's quite suspicious of her or he has been and uh, he likes her a bit more now. And it's really nice, it's really fun to write about friends, like normal kids who live close together, go to the same school and have adventures together. I really like that. They all live in Luton, which is where I grew up. And the close that they live on is kind of based on a close that my auntie and uncle grew up on. I love um, streets that are <laughs> round. <laughs> yeah, it's a cul-de-sac. So I like little, I like little communities within communities. So that's why I, I, I set it there. What was Wes like to write as a character? Because because I immediately when I was reading it, I was like, I know this, I know this kid. Like I just, it's so he's so realistic to me, and it just is so well written. And it it must have been such a he must have been such a fun character to write as well. Yeah, he's a really fun character to write. He's he's like a regular boy. Uses slang quite a lot. He's quite grumpy and irritable sometimes with good reason. And the things he comes out with make me laugh. I know it sounds weird, like I made him up. He's my character, but he's he has his own life in my mind. And he's like, you know, bad thoughts are doing laps around my brain. And I'm like, yeah, I can see, I can see that, Wesley. I love writing from his perspective. He's a funny boy, but he's also got a lot on his shoulders. He, you know, looks after his mum and his and his siblings, and he feels responsible for them as his dad left them when he was quite young. So he's kind of like an old soul. Yeah, he, I, mean, I just also love he's just a cheeky chappy, isn't he, as well? There yeah. is something, he's clever and he's quick. And also in the book, because of course this is a murder mystery, you give us a, a lovely grid of all of the possible people who could have been the culprits. It really felt like I was there with you as one of the detectives. I was reading it thinking, yeah, that was the motive. Yeah, sure, fine. It must be, again, quite cool to be able to plot it out like that for the for the reader as well. Yeah, I love a chart in a book. I really think it's important to be able to keep all the threads together. And when you're writing murder mysteries... 
you have to know what's what's happening and what's going on. And I'm a firm believer of when you write a story or you create something creative, there are no wrong answers. You can't go wrong. Everything you make is valid and is an expression. But when you do a when you create a murder mystery, you have to know what's happened and who did it and why and when. Because I think you don't want to leave your readers with any plot holes or make them angry. So yes, I it's important to keep track of everything and the chart is there for the reader and for me and for me and for me if anybody out there wants to be a murder mystery writer figure out what the crime is before you start and then you can work backwards from that and then you could put in all your red herrings and all your tricks and your scams but yeah you need to know who did it and why this is top tips for me thank you I guess I ever do write one I'm, I'm intrigued and it, it must be is it difficult to write one for kids are you worried that parents are going to be like oh no it can't be too too gory or do you just go with it and see what happens definitely make sure it's not too gory I'm writing a something at the moment and the the murder method is icky and I'm thinking I have to change it because I don't like it I don't even want to read it myself but no I do think about that a lot but for me I write the best story I can and I hope that children and their parents like it really I always want to make sure that the stories that I write for children are absolutely genuine and heartfelt and I don't want to write down to children and young people. I want to meet them where they are with their stories. So I try and be as as authentic as possible with them. So I write the best stories I can and hope that children love them. I don't want to dumb down or be patronising to young people ever. Because I think that young people, when they read something that is patronising, they can tell, they can sm- they can smell a rat. And I never want them to smell a rat with me and my stories. Now, before I let you go, we always do a little quick fire round of questions here on Fun Kids for every author. And uh, so as we've never met before, I thought I'd do it with you right now, if that's okay. All right, lovely. Uh, no stress, obviously. Uh, books or Kindles? Books. Heroes or villains? Villains. Film adaptation or TV adaptation? TV adaptation. That's the one that a lot of authors struggle with, actually, that that question. Miss Marple or Sherlock Holmes? Oh, that's like asking who my favourite child is. That's a difficult question. Miss Marple. Beginnings or endings? Beginnings. Hogwarts or Narnia? Narnia. Laptop or write by hand? Laptop. Do you write nine to five or whenever you fancy? Whenever I fancy, let's say. Paddington Bear or Winnie the Pooh? Winnie the Pooh. Finally, the big one, salt and vinegar or cheese and onion? Salt and vinegar every day, all day. Cheese and onion is antisocial. Yes, that is the correct answer. You could say anything for the other ones. That's the one I wanted to hear. <laughs> Listeners can't see me. I am literally punching you. Because <laughs> you're right. It's antisocial and people who say that are not good people. <laughs> I could write a thesis on people who are in for that answer. I tell you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you also for taking me quick fire around so seriously. I love this. You were there. That was great. Yeah, I wanted to expand on some of those, but I won't. It's quick fire. So yes. No, I appreciate you took it again. So that's, it's, some people don't quite appreciate the rules of the quick fire round. <laughs> Shana, thank you so much for telling us all about the Nine Night Mystery. I believe it is out right now. Is that correct? It is out right now. Absolutely. And uh, thank you. And what a joy to talk to you. And hopefully I'll see you soon. You will. Thank you so much. That was a brilliant Shana Jackson telling us about the Nine Night Mystery, a book I absolutely adored. Definitely check it out. You've been listening to Fun Kids Meets, the podcast where we meet amazing people. And remember, you can hear more outstanding authors like Shana on the Fun Kids Bookworms podcast with me, Bex, every other Wednesday. Bye. <laughs>